Hello, I'm Priscila Figueiredo, physical therapist and PhD student at Universidade Federal de Minas Gerais, Brazil. Today, I'll be presenting some of the key points of the article Hand Arm by Manual Intensive Therapy and Daily Functioning of Children with Bilateral Cerebral Palsy, a randomized controlled trial, which was recently published in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. Hand Arm by Manual Intensive Training, Habit has been shown to be effective in promoting bimanual performance and daily functioning in children with unilateral cerebral palsy. Children with bilateral CP may also present difficulties in coordinating their hands to perform self-care, play, and school activities. Thus, habit may be a potential intervention for these individuals. The aim of this study was to examine the effects of habit on daily functioning, unimanual dexterity, and bimanual performance in children with bilateral CP compared to children maintaining customary care. In order to do that, we conduct a randomized controlled trial. 39 children with bilateral CP, aged between 4 and 17, classified in levels 1, 2, and 3 of the manual ability classification system and with no history of orthopedic surgery or botulinum toxin injections in the previous six months, were recruited in Associação Mineira de Rehabilitação and randomly assigned either to an intervention group performing habit or to a control group who maintained customary care. Habit consists of an intensive, structured, child-active, repetitive practice of bimanual activities by means of part-task practice, which involves the performance of specific target movements for five trials of 30 seconds each, and whole-task practice, which involves the performance of complete activities using both hands, including the practice of individualized functional goal training. Children in the habit group were engaged in habit six hours per day five days per week for three weeks, totally 90 hours. Our primary outcomes focused on children's daily functioning, measured using the Pediatric Evaluation of Disability Inventory, PD, and the Canadian Occupational Performance Measure, COPM. Our secondary outcomes focused on participants' unimanual dexterity, measured using the Jepsen taylor test of hand function, and the box and box test, and by manual performance, measured by the both hands assessment. Both Linear mixed effects models estimate interindividual variability and intraindividual patterns of change over testing sessions. Children participating in habit showed greater improvement in the performance and satisfaction with the performance scales of the COPM and functional skills and caregiver and system self-care PD scales between the pre- and post-tests relative to children in the customary care group. Children participating in habit made also greater improvements for the dominant hand in the box and blocks test between the pre- and post-tests relative to customary care. For the non-dominant hand in box and blocks test, as well as in Jepsen Taylor test for both dominant and non-dominant hands and in Boha, the new model had the best fit, suggesting that the group or time effect did not account for any of the variants. Our results indicate that a positive effect of habit for children with bilateral CP were related to daily functioning outcomes. Children's unimanual dexterity, especially of the non-dominant hand, as well as their bimanual performance measured by the BOHA, did not change after habit in children with bilateral CP. For children with CP, the relevance of targeting daily activities is well established in the literature. Activities of daily living, especially those related to self-care, are the most frequent functional priorities reported by parents of children with CP. For these children, having the ability to perform self-care activities diminishes caregivers' overburden and facilitates socialization, community integration, and transition to independent living.
One explanation to the lack of change in bimanual performance may be due to the characteristics of our sample. For children with moderate limitations in hand function who are older than 8 years old, changes in bimanual performance after the intervention may have been insufficient to be detected by the BOHA, especially considering that there is evidence that children with bilateral CP reach 9% of their limit on the BOHA at approximately 30 months of age. Furthermore, ours is the first intervention study using the BOHA as an outcome measure. Since this instrument has been recently developed and its responsiveness to change and smallest detectable change have not yet been established, it may not be sufficiently sensitive to detect change of the magnitude resulting from this intervention with these participants' characteristics. For more information and deeper discussion regarding the effects of habit in children with bilateral CP, read the full article in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology and feel free to contact us by email.